and welcome back to Wolfpack. So in the first video I did, I gave you a look at the Type 7 U-boat that we are um, inhabiting. And in video after that, I showed you how to make the torpedo data calculator work, which was as much of a learning experience for me uh, as it was for um, for you guys. Something that my uh, one of the uh, commenters on my video noted. One thing uh, that I'm hoping to do in this video, and I'm going to stress hoping here, is put all that into practice. So, you know, I've I've seen many people wonder how do you actually kind of go from operating various bits into a U-boat um, into being a, you know, trained hunter person. So, um, well, let's hope to show you some of that. So, um, we're going to be diving in a minute, so I'm just going to shut over that hatch. So I'm the only one on board at the moment, and basically the idea of this is to try and give you a look at all of the stations, and um, somebody keeps messaging me at the most inappropriate of moments. Uh, one thing that has changed quite recently um, is that the uh, Echo Ranger is uh, in place, so there is a C4 now, which makes a navigator's job very important. I was questioning the wisdom about having a dedicated station to the navigator, but actually it's going to be quite important. Um, so you can see um, the charts now have all the depths, uh, and your icon disappears uh, when you go underwater, so it's purely down to your navigator to be able to track that. Um, and in order to assist with that, um, the Echo Ranger is now working, so you can switch between the depths and if we go here, I think we're probably just over 100 meters in depth. So if we use the longer range one, we're probably looking at about 110, so if we ping it, yeah, so just, just, just shy of 110. Um, the problem with this is that other ships can hear that ping and hone in on you once they're educated enough, but I don't know if that is the case at the moment. Um, so the reason that this obviously becomes important is you now no longer just have to worry about crush depth. So in um, when I've tested this previously, crush depth is about 230 meters uh, in this game. However, we've only got what 110 meters of depth, so we can only go this far. Um, so we'll hit the bottom before we crash. Uh, before we crash, which is interesting. So right. We've got our ship, we in theory have our crew, even though they're not present and correct, actually, yeah. Uh, one thing I was going to be, I was going to show you, and this facilitates being on the surface. So we're currently riding quite high in the water, uh, and that's a good thing because it means that uh, we can actually get down off of the conning tower. Uh, and go walk about the deck, which is also important uh, because it means we have use of the deck gun, which um, which means that if any ships needed uh, a ruddy good talking to, we can deliver that via a 88 millimeter cartridge. Um, however, it does mean that if a plane was to come above us, we would be a, we would take a very very long time to dive, um, which was. Which would not, uh, which would not be good. So, let's just say that the captain suddenly gives the um, preparation to dive. Um, what we would do is we would flood the ballast tanks. So forward ballast tanks open. You always flood up by the uh, forward direction first, then aft ballast tanks. Now open. So if we go to the gauges, you can see that our tanks are now flooded. 15 there, 10 there. So if we go back to the surface as fast as we can, <clears throat> you will basically see when we get to the surface that we're now running deck awash. Well, once the tanks are full anyway. Yeah, you can see that the waves are now starting to come over the, uh, the front and the rear of the... Um, the U-boat. So this has benefits and it sometimes does not. So the benefits uh, are that you're still on the surface. I still have full use of the conning tower so I can see what's around me which gives me a lot better visibility and situational awareness than the periscope does. Um, I'm running heavy so all I have to do now instead of flooding three tanks I only have to flood one tank in order to um, 
in order to actually dive beneath the surface so it's much quicker. However, on the downside, because the deck is awash, I now I can actually get off the conning tower, but I'd probably die. Um, it would be unsafe to use the deck gun, it's too low in the water. Uh, and also you're running heavier, so you're burning more fuel um, than you would do if you were running light. So what we're going to do here, uh, we're going to now dive proper. So the captain would give the command to the helm, uh, well to, to all stations, be ready to dive. I don't actually know what the command is for diving. Um, so, oh, I've left the planes in the up position, so that's that's definitely going to help us. So let's let me just neutral the plane. So the planes are level. Cool. So it's not a crash dive situation. Um, so you wouldn't instinctively use a negative tank unless you were in a hurry. So let's just take us down by the dive planes. So this is a dive officer station. He would go full sinking on the dive plane. So that'll take a minute to work. It will it will work, but I'll just take it nice and slow. So we're, we are now going to dive. Um, because we are going to dive, what this means is the diesel engines are not going to work. In fact, if you were to leave the diesel engines running in a U-boat while underwater and without a snorkel, you would use up all of the air on board the submarine within a few seconds. And I believe we have. Yeah, okay, so we've basically killed the engine room. So you hear now if I go to stop, they won't respond. Um, so in-game, you get a penalty for being on diesel engines. Um, <laughs> took too long to explain that. <coughs> so we're going to get carried under water with our momentum. The other thing is, if you check here, you can see that our icon has now gone grey, which means that we have, we're now no longer on the surface. So if I, I now reset the odometer, because um, we're not on the surface anymore. So the navigator gets ready to begin taking over navigation. Dive officer has just uh, the helm officer has just killed half of the ship because <laughs> I took too long to explain it and we're continuing to dive. So because we've now not actually got any forward motion, um, we're no longer oh, okay. Yeah. So there you go. The penal the penalty's over. So what to do? Uh, what you would have what you would have done is as soon as the order comes in to dive. Um, the helmsman would put the, the engines to full electric, which means you're now running on the battery. You can see the battery display there, and then we'll put us to dead slow. So both engines are now ahead dead slow, which is going to help us go underwater. We're now beneath periscope depth, so this is the fine dive plane controls. So um, this is the deck, so if, you're, if your depth under keel is less than 5, meters um you still have access to the deck if it's between five and eight meters uh you have access to the conning tower but not the deck and up to 14 is the uh access to the conning tower now i want to be careful here so i want to keep us underwater but i don't want to keep us going fully underwater so i'm just going to put us to dive planes down to five that should keep us from surfacing hopefully i'm just gonna check and make sure so the thing is um the submarine itself is a hydrodynamic surface so depending on what speed you're moving you can surface your own boat um just by having a dive planes level. So this is why it's really, really important, one, to have a full crew. Um, and just to, yeah, okay, so we're still we're still going down slowly. Um, yeah, so it's, it is important to have a full crew um, to make sure that all stations are manned. So we're not gonna change the helm so we don't have to worry about direction things. And the odometer is letting us know what way, um, what way everything is going. So the reason that we've gone underwater is because underwater is the only place that the um, sonar works. So one important thing, uh, th there is now stuff in place for the radio direction finder. So you can see here there's a radio direction finder log which is newly added. However, unless these guys aren't actually saying anything, uh, there's a good chance the radio direction finder isn't active in the game. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to set this up. Okay, so, oh. So we seem to have a contact already. Cool. See, this is actually really quiet. I'm going to see if I can uh, options, audio, master volume. Cool. Okay, so you can see we've got a ship. Our engine is running, but it's not going to be that loud. So we've got multiple ships between 10 degrees, 10 degrees and 280. Uh, so let's just call that in the middle of them. So 280 is going to be, it's going to be 80 plus 10. So we've got a 90 degree arc that is just ship noise. So if we say the middle of it is 300. So we're going to go to the map and uh, I'll just draw an arbitrary line. So I've, I've set this up because I've been mucking about before but um, if you do, yeah, so we'll put it to show angle and show distance because that is important. Um, so what angle did we say? Uh, it was between two, so yeah, we said about 320 so I'm, I'm, j I'm just going to draw an arbitrary line over there. So we've got sonar contact more or less directly behind us, which is which is interesting. So, um, what we're gonna do is you're gonna uh, right, okay. So, what we now need to do is we need to kind of surface the ship and go find the ships, really. But actually, in principle, what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna show you about how to kind of do the some of the navigation stuff. So if I go ahead and um, reset the odometer at let's say 240. So 240 we're going to reset that. So uh, we are currently traveling on a heading of 144 degrees by my estimation so let's just zoom in so our starting position was here so if we said yeah, we stopped it at 240 and we were at 144 so this is a pernicky little thing okay that's that's close enough we can be a few meters off so this is where I estimate my current position to be could be wrong not too sure Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to maneuver us now to a heading of 060 uh, for which I'm going to increase the half speed and we're going to go into the helm control. So this would be the captain giving the order to the helm to come to heading 060. So the helmsman is going to go into his rudder section and is now going to go hard a port. So you can see that this dial is now changing in quite a rapid fashion. So basically this is the, oh yeah, there's no mouse, so I can't actually show you. So the dial that's turning rapidly is the kind of inner segment, um, which is, it shows you it in a lot more finer detail. So the outer ring has the big numbers uh, and the, the smaller one um, lets you fine tune it a lot more. So we can tell from the big dial that we're about coming up on a hundred. We're about to come up on a hundred. So it's 108, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 201, 100 exactly. And so we kind of tick it down that way. So it's good for fine tuning. So because we're using um, a faster speed, you can see that the odometer is ticking up in quite a spicy fashion. So we're basically, we've done a circle to zero is here. I'm just actually going to bring the rudder so we're going nice and slow. Oh, we're doing to 10 actually. 
way. So we're on 63, 62, 61. Happy days. Okay. Rudder amidships. Okay, so we're now at 60 degrees. So if I were in charge here, I would. So we get 275. Uh, we're going to slow us down. Okay, so this is this is where things become slightly tricky because uh, we've we've basically turned. Um, so we did two seven two hundred seventy five meters over to sixty degrees. Uh, so sixty is going to be down up here, and we did two seven five. So let's basically turn around here. There we go. Okay, so this isn't going to be entirely accurate because um, we have we've we've basically we've not changed direction on a dime. We've kind of gone around like that, and we're now heading sixty degrees. So I'm not actually sure if there is going to be a uh, draw circle to. I don't know if that's really going to help us much. But yeah, so. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm I'm kind of going to assume that we are uh, be a right angle. So I'm I'm going to assume that we're about here. So this is this is purely on my guesstimation using my my intuition. So we'll test this in a minute. But we're now holding steady at sixty degrees. And we're going nice and slow that our sonar operator can have another chance to listen at the ship. So the last time we said it was at an angle of about 320, which is kind of up over here. Okay. So. So this is our own ship. Okay, so it's now it's now between three hundred Okay, and now this this is the kind of changeover where we start to hear our uh, our own engines, so Yeah, so um it, it so it was between ten degrees and two hundred and 80 before. I now reckon it's between 360 degrees and 270. So we said 220 last time, so we'll say 310. Uh, so if we draw a line, and we're just going to draw another arbitrary distance line. So if we just scroll all the way out, so 310. So we've moved a little bit, uh, and they have um, they have also been moving as well. So if I kept a constant heading, this would be easier to ascertain. However, I do think they're going to be moving southbound. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to clear up, uh, clear up my diagramming a little bit. So this is where I believe I am. based on not a lot. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do here, we're going to do for the final time, so we're going to come up on 220 meters uh, just now. So for the final line, we're 220 meters at 60 degrees, so 220 Right, let's just call it here. So this is roughly where I think I am. So this is how this is basically how you do the navigation. So let's just see how right I am. So we're going to speak to the helm, and we are going to tell the. Oh yeah. So you see what I you see what I mean. So I've been going ahead slow, and the dive planes have been on five degrees down, and we've actually gone from what fifteen meters to fourteen. So we've been surfacing um, ever so slowly, despite being at five. 
uh, five degrees down on both dive planes. So we're going to surface the ship. And very shortly, we're going to get to see where we are. And see how right I was. Uh, we want to ride high in the water here, so we're just going to blow the ballast tanks. So that's going to surface us nice and quickly. Cool. So we're now on the surface. So let's see how right I was. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Given that the circle was a pure estimation. So if I had the... Um, Shit, shit. And the hunt. Right, there we go. Ah, oh, we've got to close the tanks over. Ah, bad touch. That was a bit tragic. Okay, forgot to close the ballast tank. So now you can see why it's quite, it can be quite easy to uh, get yourself in a wee spot of bother with that. So, uh, because we forgot to close the ballast tanks, the tanks are actually uh, quite full. Let's just leave them... Let's just leave them about here, actually. Um, so we'll put the compressor on to get some uh, compressed air back in the tank. So yeah, um, given that I originally thought I was going to be 60 degrees to 20, that I was going to be here, my current guesstimation wasn't too bad. So this is important because we're kind of straying into a deeper zone, but had we kept going, this, would, this is a much shallower zone here, uh, indicated by the different color. So, you know, you do have to do it. Okay, we're getting there. So now that we're back on the surface, what we're going to do is we're going to put ourselves to half speed. And uh, we didn't use a great deal of battery. Uh, so actually, we just put mostly charged batteries. For so that's going to bring that all the way up. Uh, we'll level the dive planes because they're not going to be needed for a while. Okay, so the diesel engines are now back up as you can hear. Uh, we've got a good amount of compressed air. Uh, the battery is now fully charged, so let's put us to a head great. So we now know where we think these ships are, so I'm going to tell the helm to come to heading. Uh, oh yeah, so another thing uh, another thing that happened um, that's of quite interest um, is the dif difference for non-nautical folk of the difference between heading and bearing. So heading is the angle by the compass, so, on, so it's easier to show on the sonar. So you can see here, um, the outer ring is bearing, the inner ring is heading. So this is north because it's magnetic north. Zero is zero rather than north because it's it's zero degrees away from the bow, bow of the ship. So if I said come to bearing uh, zero nine zero, um, I want us to basically take a right turn um, and uh, turn ninety degrees to the right. So on the compass that would be turning to heading one five zero. So heading is uh, the direction relative to north, and bearing is the direction relative to the ship. So for example, it's important for the sonar operator because, um, you know, from a captain's point of view, in order to hear the ship, uh, the, to, well, in order, in order to have a good solution for firing, you kind of want to keep it within the upper half of the um, of the. Um, the sonar dial so basically from a bearing of 270 all the way around to a bearing of 090 so if you've got a ship yeah I, I mean I'm sure you can see the wisdom of it it's quite it's quite um, you know, it's difficult to find think of uh, an explanation on the fly that's uh, that because I've not pre thought it up but basically that's the difference is what um, heading is relative to north ie it's a compass bearing is relative to the ship so, uh, now that I've quite rarely made a fool of myself, uh, what we're going to do is we're, we want to turn ourselves to heading 300. And the reason I say 300 is because my current suspicion is that they are moving southward. 
So let's do that. Actually, if, if I think they are moving southward, then I'm going to have to have them come into my field of view. So I'm actually going to make it 280 degrees. That would be fine. So all we're doing now is we are waiting so um, I could hear I could hear the ships. Um, I could hear two deep ships. I couldn't actually hear any um, very high pitched ships, which would imply um, warships. I didn't hear any of that. So um, they could be unescorted, which would be good for us because it means we're not going to get our trombones handed to us. So we're about to come up on 280 degrees, so let's just start winding our neck in a little bit. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, things start moving a lot faster the faster that you are uh, are going. So rudder now amidships, and I'm going to call the deck watch. So any officers that are not needed. So for the moment, that's going to be the... He uh, in fact, that's everyone, actually, because nobody's particularly needed. We're not changing direction, so the helmsman is not needed deck, the uh, dive controller is not needed um, at the moment uh, because we're on the surface. The uh, radio direction finder doesn't work, it's there, but it doesn't work. Um, I don't know why I passed off something. <laughs> Strange. Um, and uh, so yeah, the, the navigator, we're fully navigating because we're on the surface. So you can see this was our first one of arbitrary distance, and this was our second one. So I don't actually know how far they are away, um, but wherever they are, I'm assuming they're moving southbound, so hopefully we'll catch up on them as they move. Um, so we are expecting them to appear somewhere over here. And it's overcast, so we don't have infinite distance. So the deck watch is about keeping a, keeping a lookout. So this is our bearing. So this is our bearing zero. This is our bearing ninety degrees. Bearing one eighty. Bearing two seventy. So we we are having them coming in at a bearing thirty. So they're going to be here. And if they're moving fast into our path, they'll probably be somewhere on this arc. If they're moving quite slowly, then I might be. Uh, I might have overestimated where they are and they might actually start moving this way. So this is why it's important to have enough people on deck to be able to scan the entire horizon. And currently I can't quite see, see anything. So it's like we've got the benefit of, uh, of sonar. Wouldn't it just be like interesting to like see the navies from um, from yesteryear, where it's um, you know you, you had no sonar, you had no radio. You know the only way to find stuff was just just by trying to like peer into the fog. It just seems terrifying. Okay, I want to give this no more than a couple of minutes, and then we. We'll Take another check of where we are. So I'm just gonna keep scanning. I didn't hear any other ships when I was in the sonar station. So I'm not expecting anything else to get the jump on us. So the benefit is uh, the ships that we're facing in the most steam ships of the period are, I've just given it away, uh, steam powered. Um, which means they do leave a big trail of smoke. So if the if it was clearer, I would see this trail of smoke before I would see the ship because it's overcast and I can actually like I have a physical boundary where I can now no longer see things. I'll probably end up seeing the ship 
first before I see the smoke. Um, but because we're diesel, we uh, because we're diesel and we're also very very low in the water, we would probably not be found. Um, so we can when we can see the enemy ships, they won't necessarily see us. And this is an advantage that submarines can use quite uh, use used to use quite a lot. Um, and why periscope works uh, also quite well because you're you're mostly hidden by the water. The problem is pesky aircraft, um, which can see you a lot further away because they're a lot higher up. And even when you're on underwater, they still have. Um, if the water is relatively clear, they can still see you. Like when you're in the bathtub, when your leg goes underwater, you know you can still see your leg. It's not that um, you know. Water does have to go a certain depth before it becomes opaque. I'm just having a scan. So this is where you get your crew to start singing some sea shanty or other. Okay, we'll give it a few, few more. Interestingly enough, back in the uh, the First World War, there were actually so this this is you would describe this as a diesel electric submarine. Diesel electric submarines still have their place uh, in the world today, being used by smaller submarines as well as uh, nuclear submarines, um, which are interesting in the way that they only have one propulsion mechanism for both above surface and underwater. Um, but back in World War One, there were actually some sub submarines that were. Um, that were steam powered as well, so they were steam electric, and so they actually had, you know, chimneys that could be like secured off and things. But yeah, steam steam electric submarines, and of course before that, you even had man power submarines, which was, which was also interesting. Oh, oh, ship sighted. We've got one. Okay, new order helm. Two heading two six five. Oh, there's nothing else. Uh, I can't actually see where we are. Uh, right, so let's go underwater. So helm two six five wrong. Why did I say that? Let's just go to rudder control, and we're going to put us to two six zero. We're going to try and head the ship off. So we now have confirmed contact with a ship. gone a wee bit further I'm actually I'm actually okay with that let's uh, we've got contact with the ship now so let's not do that I'm gonna put us down to half no I'm gonna put us down to slow speed actually okay so that's gonna give me a little bit more time to make my preparation so I'm not actually gonna go fully above surface let's deploy the attacky boy boy which I don't see right okay here we go oh wait is that two ships okay we've now got two confirmed contacts um, I'm actually too far away to be able to... Oh no, there's three! There's a third one just behind there. Cool. Cool. Good stuff. Right. So I'm going to target this one. So we've got a main mast, single superstructure, two masts at the back, and... I've not actually seen the mast at the front. Okay, so island is front and rear. So let's just go, let's now go to the recognition manual recognition manual uh, merchant. Okay, engine placement is a midship superstructure is composite, so it's in middle island. None of those right. So it must it must have the front island. So there's one that appeared to have two masts at the back. I wonder if this is a, a light merchant. It's no, they're quite close together. Yeah, it's definitely a light merchant. Uh, we'll also take it on this okay. Let's just keep scanning the area, see if we can see anything else. So we've got one ship behind. Because this appears to have two islands here. 
So the reason I'm picking this one is because I'm going to salvo it, and if I salvo it and some of them miss, some of them will run behind to the further away ship and hit that. Um, right, what's, what has got a structure that has to this guy? See, because I don't think it has a forward island. Unless... There is an interesting possibility... So there is an interesting possibility... So, listen, you've, you, there's kind of two mid-islands, so there's island, and then there's a gap, and then there's an island with a mass, so let's look for that. See, that's almost like it, but it's not quite it. No, see, I can't find anything like that. Um, yeah, it's definitely in a midship's engine. Uncomfortable. Okay, we've got plenty of time. So this is uh, yeah, periscope's done by bearing. Problemskaya. Right, I'm not seeing a forward a forward mast on it. Which is interesting. So does does it have a split superstructure? Let's let's put it to split, see what comes up. Because I don't think it does personally. be like this. Right, okay. It's definitely not passenger so I think we can easily ignore that one, so... It's the, it's the big gap. And in the two mass, because I, I did wonder if there was another ship directly behind it, but I can't really see it. Okay. problem. Because we have to be able to identify this ship before it catches up to us. So it definitely has all three islands, so we can take away this. Let's let's just look at what we know. So it has a very shallow forward island, it has a very long rear island. Superstructure, so superstructure is 
my hope is that <laughs> my uh, my worry is that they might have um, put a ship into it that might have uh, has not been. In fact, actually, it doesn't have a mid island. Yeah, it definitely, does. it definitely has a mid island. So it's set without mid. Yeah, so it definitely has a mid island. It's just it's just not overlapping with the superstructure. Idea. So it's a midship superstructure. It's composite. Um, it has a front island with no mid and no aft. It does have a mid one. So it's a heavy freighter. Shit, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Right, uh, mast height is 39 meters and length is 117, which is fine and dandy. Okay, cool. So, what we're going to do <sighs> Engines, dead slow. Actually, we're going to all stop us. We're close enough now that we can make an accurate assessment. Okay, so let's just... Hang on, they stopped. Yeah, they're, they're really slowed down. Uh, right, okay, so top of the mast is... God. I'm gonna say two cent radians. Say 8.8 .8 centimeters. 8.8 .8 centimeters. Eight point eight. Okay, right. So uh, the height is so. Let's just do so distance table. Uh, okay. Uh, distance table. So we said two, and we know that it's at 39. 39. Yeah. So we know it's 39 meters high. So it's going to be out here, and it's. So we're going to say, by the time we come to a stop, probably about 76 distance away, which is actually quite long, I don't think we can do this. Uh, 76, God. Okay, we are too far away. Cool, too far away. Uh, torpedo depth, one meter. Actually, no. Ah, God damn it, see if I could identify this one here, it would be so much easier. Right, what one are you? Uh, it doesn't really help me much. Right. I, I need to look, I need to do the one that's here. So let's just do it. Aft Island. Actually, do we have a good, a better sight now? Okay, there's no mast at the front. So... Anything else? There's no 
mast right at the front, there's only a mast right next to the island, and then there's one at the back. So I'm going to have to assume it's the light merch. That does have a mask at the front. I, I can see something. I wonder if it's type 1. Right, let's call it type one. Let's just let's let's just go for it. Let me get a new page. Right, type one. Uh, okay, so we're gonna say mast height 33, 33 length 96. Okay, we're gonna go for the, this ship because it's so much closer. Uh, okay, the height of it is currently 2.1, 2.1 center radians and. Right, distance table. So we say 33. Uh, right, actually, table, table, table. table. We, need to, we need to start. We need to go towards them because they're still uh, slow, slow, slow. Right. Okay, cool. We do need to start going towards them. So at the moment, the current distance is two, and the mass type is 33. So we say 64. So it's still very, very far away. The reason that I am discouraged. Uh, length of the ship is 96. So uh, the reason that I'm discouraged from putting the um, uh, for diving them to periscope depth is purely because um, I would need somebody here to keep it surfaced, and that is not going to happen here. So let's go back to this. Okay. Uh, so now I can see. Just gonna put us to all stop before we close down the distance. Okay, so let's look at this. So the current distance we are let's just say eight point five. 8.5 cent uh, radian. So let's let's do the calculator here. So angle on bow is going to be co um, cos to the minus one of 33 times 2. Point Actually, it's been a while. Let's just double check that measurement. Uh, so let's say... Right. Instead of 2.1, we're going to say 2.3. Um, divided by 96 times uh, what's the length? Uh, what, what's the uh, 8.5 is what we said. Okay, so the angle on bow is going to the left. Is that right? Have I done that right? Oh, I've not done that right. That's why it looks gammy. Right, okay, so it should be the arc cos of 33 times 8.5. I put the numbers in the wrong order. Times 96 or times 2.3, which is what we said. We get a math error. It's hmm. uncomfortable. I actually suspect it's about 90 degrees looking at it. And I can see now it's opening them up, so let's just take a little check, make sure we've got any ships sneaking up on us. Cool. Alright, so we're starting to get close to two and a half here, aren't we? Right, so if we say two and a half at a height of 33, we're kind of looking at about 60, aren't we? Right. Before we put this in, let's measure the speed. That's going to be the important one. So for this, we're going to need to. Well, we are on all stop, so we'll keep a 
almost want to all stop, so let's just get ready to start this, which we'll do now. So I'm going to keep the periscope dead steady, and this is important to do without changing angle uh, or anything like that. So we're looking to see how quickly it uh, goes past. Of course, if I've done this wrong, this whole this whole thing is going to be skewiff, but whatever. So we're almost done, so it is unfortunately moving quite fast. It's already covered 10 degrees in the time that we've been doing this. And you see, you can, you can see you can see the double structure of the rear mass has been giving me so much trouble, which is why I'm not convinced I've got the right ship. But whatever. Right, stop. So, okay, so the equation. So it's 96 meters divided by the time in seconds, which was 47. So it's moving 1.3 meters per second, roughly. And if we times that by 1.944, so it's moving, they're moving at two and a half knots. I can't see any reason that they're not moving at 90 degrees to our left. So let's put that in to, we'll put it to two and a half knots. So that's two, uh, so just two, two and a half is here. Cool. I'm happy that the angle on the bow, so one of them is starting to move away from us. We'll take a chance and we'll see. So the final distance check is going to be two. Yeah, they are moving away from us. So let's uh, let's put the engines to half speed. Uh, two by thirty-three is going to be. So so we're right on the cusp of what we can hit here. Um, so if we just say sixty-five on the nose. Um, for, for the, yeah, right, so 60, no, okay, so we need to, we need to bring it down by a bit more. Ooh, this is uncomfortable. Right, actually, uh, right, let's try it, shall we? Let's see if we can do a proper underwater attack here. So, what we're going to do, um, keep us on half speed. Engines to electric. Let's flood up some bad boys. So they're only moving two and a half knots. So I want to get as close to them as possible without um, disturbing. So engines are on electric. Let's put this to great speed. Okay, dive planes are going to come down. So I'm going to man the... I did shot that, didn't I? Oh god, I didn't. Fuck, 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 Okay, good. That was almost a disaster. Right, um, so. Um, tanks are full, so let's shut these over. Uh, we're going to bring us... Let's not use the alarm. Uh, we're going to bring us over to 250, which is going to change our angle on bow calculations. Okay, so I was hoping for this to be a nice. Uh, okay, so here we go. The dive planes are now starting to catch on. So, what I want to do, level dive planes. up. We're going to fine tune this nice and easily. So we're now climbing just a wee bit too fast for my liking. So this is this is what I mean before. So now that we're, I've leveled the dive plane, so in theory we shouldn't go up and we should not go down. But you can see that we're actually raise, rising by just under one meter uh, per minute. Which is interesting. So the electric engines are on, we're at fast speed, hoping to try and close down this distance, so our current speed is 7 knots, which is fine. 
Um, and we're sinking ever so slightly. So we're gonna bring us down to 10. No, we need to raise us up. Yeah, we need to raise us up. Because um, as you can see here, the fine-tuned depth is above periscope depth. So again, this highlights the importance of everyone manning their stations. However, as I've already specified, uh, I am entirely by my storming for this video. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to keep climbing until we get to periscope depth. I'm just going to fine-tune it nice and easily here. So I'm going to bring us to about 13 meters of depth and we're just using this time to try and clamp down on some of the uh, the distance it's taking us to get to, um, yeah, I'm going to call, use this time to uh, clamp down on the distance taken. Because the closer we can get, the less time we're going to have to wait for the damn torpedoes to, uh, to see if they hit, so. Bring the rear dive plane amidships. Hello, phone. How can I help you today? Okay, cool. Right, so we're 13 and a half. Just coming up on 13. Just trying to fine tune this so that if we do go anywhere, we're just going to go a little bit deeper. Okay, so we're now underwater. Um, successfully, so I didn't kill the uh, the department this time. So as you can see, we're uh, quite spicily underwater. So if I raise us up, the ships are now over here. And uh, we do have a much better view of things, so it's just the three ships, there are no more ships around the place unless we're about to get absolutely ran shackled by somebody else, but I think we're cool, cool, amazing, and delightful, where the hell is uh, the ships, it should be about here, yeah, there we go, okay, cool, right, so, that one is definitely moving away, I think this one is moving away too. begs an interesting question actually. What if it didn't have? Um, so let's just have a look here. That's nice. I don't know how to work with the mess actually. Um, if we just put it to unspecified, if we put everything to unspecified, let's see if we can't find anything that has that interesting double ship, that double pattern. This, this list contains absolutely everything, yeah, so now we're on here. Still can't find it. Still cannot bloody find it. Okay, uh, composite engine uh, amidship. Uh, how are we doing for depth? Raising up. 
quite a bit actually. one mass but because I'm looking at an angle not so it's got two masts it has two masts that's it and we're actually looking at it at quite a steep angle so had we fired those tor tor torpedoes uh, we, we would have got it quite wrong so we've got one at the front and one at the rear so I'm now thinking it's something like this Part of the problem is that we've spent so long trying to calculate things. Uh, part of the problem is that we spent so long trying to calculate all this while we're still quite far away. I might have been right the first time. Yeah. 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 
that'd be about right. Right, let's go uh, let's go beneath deck and fix our situation. That should do us long enough. Uh, actually, while we're here, we may as well whap us over to the side a bit. turning into a wonderfully longer video than I thought it was going to be, but my incom incompetence knows absolutely no bounds. I've also never really done this much before, so it is uh, it's quite, quite difficult. Okay, cool. cool. Right, so I'm still not unconvinced that this is the right one. Um, Closer, could probably get a better recognition of them, but for the moment, the moment I can't. Uh, so we'll go back to uh, light, whatever it was, light freighter. Uh, let's specify light. Hey, would you both join the gate? What? Going, going, going. Uh, light merchant type one, which is uh, what I suspect this one is. Uh, okay, how are we doing for distance? So let's call it 3 by 33, uh, so 3 by 33, 42. So we're now close enough that we could possibly hit it. Possibly. We just need to be able to do the angle on bow. So if we say it's 3 and the distance of the ship is seven. Right, let's see what this is. So if we 
to say its um, height is 33 times 8.5 divided by 96 times 3. That gives us... Okay, so the angle on bow, if I've done this right, and God forbid I've definitely not done this right, is going to be 90, plus, so it's going to be about this. Yeah, so 90 to 100 and 3. So, 3. And continuing to move. Okay, shall we take a hot walk at it. So the length we think is 96, which is around here. Um, okay. So what's the nearest, the next tick? The next tick's not going to be until 4. At 4, at 33, it's going to be 30... 32. Uh, we'll call it, yeah, we'll call it 33. Cool, right. So 35, 33 is about here. So what we need to do is we need to wait for it to get to tick mark four. So we're currently, currently three dead on. Oh, sorry, let's just launch it. Yeah. We'll just launch it for three. Because um, then we'll get time to reload. So let's see how this goes. Three for three. Three is... Okay, let's see if we can't hit any ships. Torpedo away, one. Oh, wait, 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 what's happening? Warning light's not on, is it? Light's not on. Torpedo select, ah, we've not selected this, so attack periscope, here we go. Right, uh, so angle on bow is 13. What else is that messed up? 96 is fine, 46 is fine, target speed is 2.5, which is fine. Torpedo depth, we'll get it to, it's quite wavy, so we'll get it to run at 2, me, two meters. Yeah, so the beam is 4 meters, so it should still hit, that's fine. 4 minutes 48 on the clock. Let's see if we fucked up. So. What, 10 seconds? We've got 12 seconds actually. Three, two, one, torpedo away, one, two, three, four, four torpedoes away. Okay. Cool. So this should hit in approximately five minutes. <laughs> See, it a bit, folks. Okay, I've skipped ahead in this little tutorial type absolute farce that it's become. Um, so, if I go back to attack periscope, uh, you can see if I look at the ships now, um, you saw before I turned the ship uh, that they were actually moving quite fast um, in one way or the other. But now th the ship is barely moving in the crosshair. So this is what's called a constant bearing. So I'm now heading uh, in towards them uh, I've, and I've got almost exactly the right angle um, to intercept them. So we've still got three minutes before the torpedo strikes, so let's just pop back and, and see what happens. We did it! We got one! One hit, two hits. And it was the right one as well. Happy days! Just saw some lightning strikes, so that's obviously that one done. So they now know that we're here, so they could uh, start doing funny stuff. Let's just have a uh, check around this, make sure we're okay. Uh, we're riding alright in the water. Uh, I was spending the time 
Uh, okay, we've, we've hit it nice and level. It is it is sinking down quite well. Uh, okay, so we, we've sank a ship proper. The ships are, are now starting to turn an interesting distance away from us. So we've got one ship down. Yeah. So they've now changed heading quite catastrophically. Because they're now going to be zigzagging. So let's just uh, let's put the timer off now that we don't need it on. We've almost completed this objective. Uh, This one's gone for a mild panic and is turning away. This one actually seems to be on a relatively constant bearing. Let's assume... I can assume the mass is The problem is I now can't see what the mast configuration is. Um, I, wa I'm, I was actually spending the time trying to work out what the uh, what the what other ones are, and you know what? It'll probably be more of the same. So I think this is probably as good a place as any to call this the end of this video. So basically, I've kind of shown um, a little bit about how to identify where uh, the ships are, how to navigate. Um, you've seen you've seen me use quite a lot of intuition in order to uh, in order to actually get this this ship, and it's worked. It's worked out quite well. You've seen me use it in navigation. You've seen me used it in uh, target finding. And, um, yeah, happy days, cool. So, um, I think that's probably enough for today. These ships are now going to be zigzagging like a boss, so trying to hit them is going to be an absolute bloody nightmare. Um, yeah, sorry it took me so long to work out what the, uh, what, <laughs> what the target ship was, but, um, in the end, I made a judgement, I got the right judgement, and we got the ship sunk. Um, so hopefully, uh, in your cruise, this all goes a wee bit smoother than it has done. Everything's been broken down really, really slowly to try and show you what I've been doing, like what I would have the crew doing at each each process uh, of finding the ships, and hopefully your next adventure is all going well. So thank you very much for watching this episode. As ever, if you've got any um, questions about Wolfpack, there's a wonderful back discord that you can join for hints and advice and yada 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 the link is in the description below as is my discord channel um and yeah thank you very much for joining me and i'll see you next time